第三十六对演讲的题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。Under the globalization and rapid change and rapid development of technology, people are concerned that they may be replaced by foreign labors or machines. We think that the first skill we need to develop to be irreplaceable is creativity. How exactly do we train ourselves to be creative? First, collaboration is the key. While learning, if you're not quite sure what to do next, read a lot and talk to a lot of experts. When you have enough inputs, new ideas start popping up. Second, simply unplug yourself and do something you love. Albert Einstein once once shared that at times. He would get so wrapped up in his work that he forget about the time, and discover something amazing. Creativity is often boosted when you are relaxed. Third, list out every list out the worst ideas you would ever have. This may sound silly, but sometimes when you're stuck in ideas, the best thing to do is to make a list of worst things you can think of, and stretch your creativity. Is creativity enough to survive in this modern world? Next, we would like to share more about people skills. Also, we think that teamwork is also a very crucial part that everyone should be work on. There are two points that we would like to that we would like to share with you. First, don't be a complainer. Although you may have something that, although you may have. Some roles that you dislike, however, the the successful people will never waste their times to will never waste their time to complain about what. Next, good communication is also a crucial part that everyone should focus on. The team leader should always give suggestions to their members, and the members should always. Accept what the members and the leader have said to make their teams better in the future. In order to communicate with others in international settings, English ability is utterly important. As a result of globalization and and the common use of technology, we're often presented by opportunities. Opportunities to communicate with people speaking different,、uh, speaking a different language. English comes in handy. However, what are what are some ways to effective effectively learn English? The first thing you should do is to find something that you are passionate about. For example, if you like fashion, find a podcast that is about it and listen to it as as often as possible every day. Surrounding by English is the key. Tip number two: keep a keep the list of words that you you've learned. Learning, learn when learning English, new words can be can be learned constantly. New words can be learned constantly. And tip number three and and tip number three is simple. Never be afraid to make mistakes. Learning is all about. Learning is all about. But learning is all about right hole and error. Learn. Uh. What we can only by learning from the mistakes that we have, can we can we truly grow. As you can see, creativity, being a team player, and English ability are three essential skills for our youth to have. If you want to be irre irreplaceable and stand out from others, be creative. If you want to be amiable, be a humble player, and work with others. If you want to expand your horizons to the international setting, master the skill of English with consist consistent hard work. The world is ever changing. And changes have been especially drastic ever since the creation of internet. The, young, the way young people can be successful in this era 
is to keep an open mind. Be, always be open to learning new things and new ideas. We believe that, we believe that the skills we have mentioned, we, we believe that the skills we have mentioned that with us will be, we are ready for any challenge that comes our way. Thank you. Thank you. The 34th grade speaker is number five. Let's begin. Good morning, judges and contestants. In light of globalization, competition undoubtedly increases. Our generation have to compete with AI, which is known to replace many different jobs. We also now compete in a larger playing field. We have to top ourselves with the best in the country and the best in the world. Thus, we need skills to improve our competitiveness. In our opinion, we believe critical thinking, creativity, and technological knowledge are essential skills that young people need to have to ensure a bright future ahead. I'll let my teammates elaborate more. Jade? Thank you, Aiden. The ability to have critical thinking skills is important in being more competitive. With it, people can form valid opinions, make good decisions, and solve problems efficiently. On the other hand, companies can therefore increase productivity and reduce cost. According to a survey done in 2013, top employers like the big four accounting firms, EY and PricewaterhouseCoopers, all confirms that having critical thinking skills is vital and crucial in being more competitive. In the latest Global Competitiveness Index released by the World Economic Forum, it even indicates that the lack of critical thinking skills in Thailand greatly affects their competitivity, which causes the country to drop from 38 to 40 in the same index. It's important for young people to be critical thinkers in order for them to access information efficiently and be valued by companies. Next, Sunny will introduce you the other skill. Sunny, please. Thank you, Jade. Creativity is another important aspect required to be competitive. With creativity, diverse ideas and thoughts could be further addressed without tedious context. Yao Yanzi serves as one of the examples she is a Taiwanese girl who created tableware specifically for old people to prevent choking, dropping food, and spilling water. The judges were touched by this innovation that was finally brought to life by creativity. As a result, she got a chance to exhibit her work at SMOMA, a well-known museum in LA, which attracted many famous companies' attentions like Tesla, Google, and Apple. Creativity is often considered as a soft power. However, it influences the world greatly without being overly intrusive. No doubt, creativity is one of the important features our younger generations must have. Next, Yvette will continue. Yvette, please. Thank you, Sunny. In a world where technology dominates, the knowledge of these technologies and skills to operate them are crucial abilities to remain competitive. In 2019, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics revealed that 75% of the jobs in the U.S. required computer proficiency. But just knowing how to open up a PowerPoint or compile data on Excel is not enough. Oxford University finds that in 20 years, 35% of the jobs are going to be lost due to AI and automation, which is precisely the reason why one out of 10 elementary school students in the UK start to learn to code the same time they learn ABCs. Innating this ability from a very young age prepares them to tackle jobs that include software engineering and AI programming. As technology changes our world through AI revolution, we can no longer fall back on repetitive manual labor jobs. Instead, we have to acquire the expertise of these new technologies to remain valuable and competitive to society. Back to you, Aiden. Thank you, Yvette. With critical thinking, creativity, and technological knowledge, 
young people will be able to face increasing competition and the advancement of technology. With critical thinking, we learn to analyze information effectively and wisely. With creativity, we gain world recognition. From the mastery of technology, we stay connected in our tech-centric society. The youth are the future leaders of the world. And with these qualities, we can create a new vision for a new generation. Thank you. The third question for the speaker is number two. Please start. Traveling is the best way to get to know a country. You can learn about the local history and culture with its different cuisines and lifestyle. As students, we have a limited budget and time for traveling. So the best choice is to go to a southbound country that is reachable within a few hours of flight time, a place where people are friendly and where we are welcome. So where should we go? One of the nearest countries, the Philippines, is definitely a great option to consider. The Philippines is rich in history, tourist attractions, and interesting food. Now, let's welcome Vivian to tell us where to see the historical sites. To understand the history of the Philippines, we would like to spend a few days visiting historical places. For example, the oldest stone church, San Augustine Church. The place is where the Rizal Monument was erected so we can pay tribute to the national hero who fought against Spain for the liberation of the Philippines. The place also houses the Nas National Museum of Natural History, Japanese Garden, Chinese Garden, and the National Planetarium. We can also enjoy a pleasant walk in Manila's Chinatown, known to be the world's first Chinatown on Angping Street. The place also, the place, <sighs> Manila's Chinatown, we can also celebrate, we also celebrate the same festivals. Manila's Chinatown, we also celebrate the same festivals. It will be interesting to celebrate the same festivals in somewhere else. Let's welcome Benjamin to elaborate about the tourist attractions. It is more fun in the Philippines. That is a slogan of the Philippines Department of Tourism, and we could not agree more. Besides the historical site, we plan to visit one of the most popular destinations, Cebu. We plan to relax and enjoy the beautiful sights of wildlife in the Philippines as we cruise into Cebu for our remaining days. There are so many things that we can do in Cebu. For example, our dream of swimming with the whales and sharks can finally come true. Close to Oslo, as we can dive into the water and witness those graceful giants swim by as they open their gigantic mouth, I promise you, it's gonna be a breathtaking experience. Another must-play water sport is the Kawasan Falls Canyoneering. The canyoneering starts in the jungle where you have to put on a helmet and a life vest, accompanied by a guide where you'll jump into the water and float down the canyon. This goes on for two hours as you float, jump, and climb your way down the Kawasan Falls. When you finally end up at the Kawasan Falls, you're gonna end the experience with a big jump from the top of the waterfall. Resurfacing to the dry land, one must be accelerated. Now I'd like to invite Anna to talk about the delicacies that we plan to try in the Philippines. A trip to the Philippines won't be complete without having a taste of traditional Filipino dishes like chicken adobo. Adobo means marinated in a mixture of soy sauce and vinegar. Another must-try set would be the balut. It always raises eyebrows with tourists in the Philippines. The balut is a fertilized duck egg eaten in a shell and a pinch of salt. 
One may hesitate to try this dish, but we believe that we cannot shine away from new experiences. Now I'd like to welcome back Joseph to conclude. With the southbound policy, Taiwan aims to revitalize its economy and enhance relations with its neighboring countries. As students visiting the Philippines, we can also go with the mission as youth ambassadors to introduce to our foreign friends the culture and beauty of Taiwan. We will do our part to promote exchanges among our countries and build closer links between Taiwan and, and the, the new southbound, southbound countries. countries. Thank you. number four. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. As a global citizen, every one of us should take full responsibility for Mother Earth. Whether internationally or domestically, we should undertake current challenges and never ignore the impacts on Taiwan. Though global issues range from human rights to world peace to food crisis, today's focus is on climate change since it has violently assaulted the whole world, inclusive of Taiwan. Now, Sean will elaborate more. Sean. Sure, Joanna. As we know, global warming is threatening all species, including humans. For one thing, rising sea levels deprive them of habitats. For another, heat waves, wildfire, droughts, and floods endanger the survival of all creatures. It's estimated that 30 to 50 percent species may go extinct in the future. We we'll witness more natural disaster devastating our Earth. According to Taiwan News, it's amazing to know that Taiwan has 12 years left to relocate a new capital. Owing to the heat island effect, the Taipei Basin suffers from extreme weather like a natural reservoir is predicted to be flooded to a height of three meters. It's such a horrible scene, isn't it? Next, any will detail more. Yes, Sean. According to Chen Zhaolun, a researcher at Academia Sinica, the sea temperature around Taiwan is increasing faster than the global average. This has put the fishery in a vulnerable position. With cold water fish moving northward, the warming water changes the original ocean currents so that the annual catch of fish migration is dropping down. Westwards, numerous typhoons and torrential rainfalls have paralyzed our traffic system, ruined public infrastructure, and failed crop harvest. That indeed impacted Taiwan far more seriously than ever. Therefore, right now we cannot just sit back, we must do something to improve it. Well, in the next, Angel will tell, tell us how to take action. Sure, it's my duty to remind everyone. Every specialist and citizen should team up for the reduction in carbon emissions. We need to be down to earth to cut back on greenhouse gas. First, explore renewable resources and diversify the energy alternatives, such as solar, wind, or biogas power. Under the cooperation of experts and authorities, we all minimize fuel combustion, negotiating reasonable cost prices. We maximize the efficiency of energy sources. The goal we want to achieve by 2025 is to boost the share of renewable energy up to 20% in overall generation. As for average people like us, Minor changes will make Taiwan a difference. For example, often reduce, reuse, and recycle. Bike or tech mass transportation. Eat less meat and choose energy saving stuff. Every global citizen, old or young, can contribute some to carbon reduction. Finally, Joanna will sum up for us. Yes, Angel, it's my privilege. Considering the world's well-being, it is urgent for the global community 
to fight against climate change. It's a matter of human survival, and there is no exception to us. Take a look at Taiwan. Our fishing migration is decreasing. Our crop harvest is failing, and our transport infrastructure is collapsing. With simple tax done, we can cut greenhouse gas. We can better Taiwan. We can better Mother Nature. For the betterment of the world, let's, let's go, go all out. out. Thank you. Number five. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. With the rapid development of high technology, the amazing plots in the science fictions really appear in our daily lives. The new generation is facing a fast changing world. In the future, many job opportunities are still unpredictable. Therefore, what kinds of skills and characters should our new generation be equipped has become a public concern. According to the writer of best-selling book, Future Fields, Alex Ross, he has interviewed with many successful entrepreneurs trying to find out the key abilities that young people should cultivate in the future. He concluded that there are 10 crucial abilities that the new generation should, should possess. Among them, the most important two are cultural comprehension and cross-field learning. Next, Angel will continue to talk about some detailed suggestions. Thank you, Angela. Well, goes the saying, there is no boundary on the internet. Born in the era of high technology, young people should have the concept of globalization. Therefore, our top priority is to understand, respect, and appreciate the diversified cultures. Since languages are the bridge of communication, mastering at least two foreign languages has become the basic requirement. The more STEM we collect in our passport, the more mobility we have. Mobility can enrich our horizons. What's more, it is necessary to learn computer language skills because it could change our logical thinking ability. Although the routine jobs will be operated by the computers in the future, we don't need to worry about that human beings will be replaced because we are the creators. Next. Betty would talk more other crucial abilities that we should develop. Thank you, Angel. In the future world, there are no boundaries among the learning fields. Thus, the ability to integrate the knowledge is very important. Living in a constantly changing information age, we should keep learning, just as Steve Jobs said. Stay hungry, stay foolish, the one who could survive in the future is not the most intelligent one, but the one who could adjust himself with the time. There's no doubt that the robots will be commonly used in every aspect, especially in the laboring market. If we don't want to be replaced by the robots, we should learn to think sharply. In addition, the difference between robots and us is that we have feelings. The fact that we have empathy and learn to get along with others is especially important. Our educational system should encourage the youth to be adventurous, innovative, and develop the problem-solving abilities. Next, left will conclude our speech. Thank you, Betty. With the rapid development of technology, our new generation will face the fast-paced world. According to the statistic, digitalization has become a trend nowadays. Elon Musk would be a good example of the above-mentioned features. He is a successful figure possessing the skills of digital knowledge and cross-field learning. His brilliant idea has led the way and made the technology work for human beings. 
Now, he's trying to revolutionize transportation both on Earth and in space. He's a good role model for our youth to learn. To sum up, in light of competitive trends nowadays, the young generation can learn a lot from the world's great celebrities. Most importantly, our generation will should discover our own talents and create with our own styles to contribute to the world and create our own styles. Thank you. The second team's talk is number five. Honorable judges, dear teachers and fellow students, good morning, I'm Charlotte. In the light of such trends as globalization and the rapid development of technology, I think we young people need to broaden our international perspectives by sharpening language abilities, learning international etiquette, paying attention to international concerns, understanding the megatrends, participating in international exchange activities, and so on. Moreover, with the help of technology like new media, young people have much more avenues to get involved in international issues or even change the trends. That is, we should keep learning and stay informed in order to have professional expertise and the ability to adapt to new environment, and thus increase international mobility to handle international affairs. Living in the global village, we cannot be exempted from the influence of globalization and the development of technology. With more and more global interaction among people and governments worldwide, whatever happens in the world, good or bad, is sure to influence every one of us. Next, my teammate will elaborate what we can do to cultivate our global vision. Good morning, I am Tiffany. As a global citizen, in my opinion, boosting our international perspective is one of the most important skills we should learn to be more competitive. There are many ways to do so. First, many organizations such as World Vision Taiwan, Red Cross Society, and Working Holiday Program can help us get involved in international affairs. For example, Working Holiday Program provides a great opportunity for young people to interact with foreigners. Volunteering organizations allow us to attend volunteer service orientation so that we can do volunteering jobs abroad. Also, I like to point out the importance of multicultural thinking. Rather than tunnel vision, young people should respect different cultures and develop international perspectives so that we can connect to the international community. One of the ways to do this is to learn as many foreign languages as possible. We young people should learn a second foreign language to get familiar with the contact zone instead of the comfort zone. Other hopeful ways including watching, watching foreign TV series and surfing global internet pages, which let us appreciate different cultures as well. Next, my teammate Claudia will continue with more. Hello everyone, I'm Claudia. As mentioned above, it is important for us to be concerned about global issues. However, it is more important for us to take action and put what we think into practice, especially in this new media age, as younger generation can take advantage from social media, such as Facebook or Instagram, to exert positive influence on the world. Take Greta Thunberg, for example. As a teenage student, she has always been caring about global warming an intimate danger in threatening all living creatures around the world. At age 15, she began her school days outside the Swedish parliament to call for stronger actions by holding up a sign saying, School Strive for Climate. Soon, she influenced her schoolmates and created a school climate strike movement under the names Fridays for Future. What's more, Thunderbird also launched a network connection of global climate strike campaign, which demonstrated more than 400 cities 4 million people involved. 
not only school peers, but also various politicians responded to her outspoken stance, acknowledging the importance of global warming. I think Rita Thunderbird is a role model who demonstrates younger generation has the ability and the power to give involved into international affairs. In other words, she proves that younger generation has an ability to inspire others and to change the world. Next, my teammate Yvonne will continue the topic. Friends, my name is Yvonne. Under the pressure of competition, the change of globalization and rapid development of technologies is what we must be faced with. The example of the young climate activist Greta Thunberg mentioned about inspires us a lot. We young people have to cultivate international perspective in order to stay competitive and make contributions to the world. We should learn to broaden world vision, where as a civil diplomat and enhance our strength for taking part in international competitions. We should have confidence and courage to respond to competitive challenges. Take action and take initiative. Instead of retreating to the comfort zone, be brave to put ideas into practice. Stay hungry, stay foolish, possess professional expertise. Be aware of and follow the migrant chance. I think anyone who has these skills must be able to keep more competitive and thank you. number five. The world is changing and changing fast. The rise of artificial intelligence changes production methods. The surge of new media diversify the way we perceive the world. However, behind these changes lurk plenty of threats, such as job loss due to AI automation. Therefore, how to survive these changes has become an important issue for a young generation. For us, three key skills are pivots to our survival in the future world. First, avail ourselves of artificial intelligence. Second, make good use of new media. And third, cultivate the problem-solving ability. And now, let's first start with the utilization of artificial intelligence. As artificial intelligence is becoming a forthcoming trend, knowing how to make good use of AI is the key to become competitive. In recent decades, Taiwan has poured a huge effort into nurturing AI talents. Since 2018, the government has held an annual competition known as the Grand Challenge, trying to screen out AI talents. As students, what we can do is to extend our knowledge of the AI technology in our free time, in such, for instance, participating in the robotics club at school. In recent years, high school students have represented Taiwan in the first robotics competition, which is a chance to give students hands-on engineering experience. Now, with extended knowledge of AI, we can further pursue a larger goal of benefiting society, such as cooperating with enterprises in the long term. Through the small nation, big strategy principle, we youth in Taiwan aim high to promote ourselves and our AI development to make the world see us. Besides AI technology, new media are another tool we can employ to be more competitive in this information age. New media provide a person abundant opportunities to become well informed on knowledge and even well known to the public. One can display talents with videos through YouTube to increase their influences among people like Radio English. Furthermore, one can exchange information quickly on certain issues and enhance their impacts via Facebook and Instagram. Take 16-year-old Swedish girl Greta Thunberg, for example. She has united millions of students to engage in a global climate strike, directing the public's attention to global warming. Another example is the Me Too movement, the biggest feminism movement on the internet. So, with skillful employment of new media, we can voice and to promote ourselves. Also, we can act as global citizens to make this world better. The third skill that we use should develop is the problem solving skill. In this AI age, we have to make a decision, either to get engulfed by this trend or to make ourselves 
irreplaceable. One thing that us humans are different from machines is that we can think more flexibly than computers and can, therefore, cope with varied problems. So, if we youngsters want to survive and be competitive in this situation, we must cultivate the problem-solving skill, which is comprised of at least three components. Perceptivity, decision-making, and execution. Perceptivity, as in to understand the overall situation, the core of the problem, and where we are. Decision-making, to analyze the possible paths and seek the most feasible one. And execution, to finish the path completely and in an organized way. For the future, it is we human who have the potential to solve problems we face in this era. And it is we young generation that is what the world needs to improve our own future. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Like the times of Charles Dickens, the age we're living in provides us with both challenges and opportunities. And by harnessing the power of AI, new media, and problem-solving skills, we can get better prepared to overcome the challenges and explore new possibilities in the future. As Nelson Mandela put it, the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. We aspire to be visionary leaders and, and create the world we want to see. Three, two, one. Thank, Thank you. you. Number three. These neighboring countries are so close to Taiwan geographically. However, we traditionally tend to belittle people there as nothing more than a source of cheap laborers. As time goes by, this country's economic development has been leapfrogging for the past decades. Therefore, we have to change this negative stereotype of concept for them. Based on people orientation, we are supposed to encourage multisocial and business links with Southeastern Asian countries and their people. Take tourism, for example, the most remarkable achievement at present, which has gotten rid of hardship experienced by local migrant workers, bringing support for Taiwan's manufacturers in the region by making mutual investment agreements. The aim is to present Taiwan as a friendly and equal partner willing to assist in this region's development. Another strategy is to appeal to Southeastern and Southern Asian to work and study in Taiwan. Hence, it can definitely help resolve talent and university student shortage as a result of Taiwan's aging society. What's more, diversifying trade eases Taiwan's too much on reliance of China. What we are expected to see in the near future is to shift Taiwan's experts of goods and services away from an over from an over-concentration on electronic products. Overall, the more globalized approach to business enables Taiwan to improve as a global business area. If without the China's factor and market, engaging with a region makes our economy lose little or nothing. The 10 Association of Southeastern Asian Nations with 630 million people and a diversity of languages and cultures are experiencing much faster growth than the rest of the world. Their rising, rising middle classes are looking for education, technology, and better living conditions. In contrast to aging Taiwan and China, Southeastern Asian nations tend to have a relatively young population, making their future economic development booming with more ease. That is to say, this is a great opportunity for Taiwanese government or businesses to invest or develop mutual cooperation in doing businesses. In terms of people-to-people -people exchange, the biggest interest has been in tourism for the past several decades. More and more travelers from the 18 countries come to Taiwan, help to offset a significant storm tourists from mainland China. 
in addition to cancelling visa requirements facilitating this growth, in other moves to promote tourism. We can encourage local governments to host travel fairs in the region, while the Tourism Bureau could encourage local restaurants to serve Islamic dietary menus or dishes. For the promotion of Taiwan as an educational center for the region, our government should prioritize some budgets to attract more foreign students from Asian nations to start in Taiwan. As many Southeastern Asian students are eager to learn from Taiwan's developing its experience in such fields as management, entrepreneurship, high-tech industry, and agriculture. In another perspective, scholarship policy is also beset by Taiwanese to study in Southeastern Asia. Furthermore, the government should encourage Taiwan's university to set up academic, academic programs in targeted countries, and their Southeastern Asian languages will also start to be taught in Taiwan schools island-wide. Our goal is to create more institutional cooperation with this country by developing fields of mutual cooperation, environmental protection, mutual recognition of educational diplomas joint scientific research projects, agreements between hospitals to train doctors, and sister city arrangement between local government as well as the promotion of tourism, and introduction of our healthcare insurance policy. From what I have mentioned above, we may definitely be able to develop a close relationship in trade, investment, education, tourism and cultural ties with Southeastern and Southern Asian countries. Thanks for listening. The first is number two. Good morning, dear judges. Southeast Asia is a filmmaker's dream. Rich culture, draw dropping landscapes, and many more. It is little wonder why so many great films have been shot here. Since my teammates and I are movie buffs, we would like to journey and run week to the following five movie-inspired locations in Southeast Asia. First of all, the giant and creepy Song Dong Cave in Vietnam, made famous by a King Kong movie, Khan Skull Island. Song Dong Cave is found the world's largest known cave passage, how we would like to see the huge size of it, which can fit a whole 40-story skyscraper inside it. Next, we will follow James Bond in the movie The Man with the Golden Gun and fist our ISIS on Ha Long Bay. The limestone cuts and isos, as well as the tranquil scenes with residents living on floating houses there, will make it a magical destination where we can truly feel the beating heart of Vietnam. After leaving Vietnam, we will have Indiana Jones and Lara Croft in the movie Tomb Raider. As our tour guide, we will explore Cambodia's Angkor Wat. We will stay at the Siem Reap, the Great Gate to Angkor, and pay a tribute to the UNESCO World Heritage with a leisure cycling tour. How my teammates and I have flown to experience the majestic and unearthly beauty, which is achieved marvelously with sandstones and bas reliefs representing important deities and figures in Hindu and Buddhist religions. Well, to preserve the historic site, eating is not allowed in the temples, of course, but grilled beef with lime and chilies, banana flower salad, and caramel style curry will later warm our stomach and heart before we take a tuk-tuk, get our hands dirty creating pottery, and kayak on Tang Sap Lake. Leaving Cambodia, we think it a good idea to head south to Malaysia and Singapore. Recently, Malaysia seems to join the Marvel Universe because Cebu, the Sarawak sleepy old town, is mentioned in the recently released Marvel film, Venom. And to be honest, their mere mention literally sparks our interest in this mystical place, which is home to 27 ethnic groups and 45 different dialects. We'll visit Cebu's handful of interesting places, including the Jay Dragon Temple, Cebu Lake Park, and the Samurai Heritage Walk. We'll also pick our adventure from jungle trekking in the Bungu Range to scuba diving in the Mary Sibidi Coral Reefs National Park. 
in Mulu, we can peer down from the canopy walks on the treetops where in Kuching, we admire the interesting architecture mix in Malaysia, with colonial buildings amongst cultural, religious, and modern architecture. Luckily, we don't have to be crazy or rich to visit Singapore. Our first stop will be the Gardens by the Bay, where the wedding reception of the leading actress in the movie, Crazy Rich Asians, is held. In the world's largest vertical garden, extraordinary tree structures are illuminated in a multi-million dollar garden all night. And the light and the music show with delight is with the sensual beauty of sights and sounds. Another highly anticipated new attraction, Juwo Chang'e Airport, will be a perfect stop for photography and memory before our departure. We believe that the 40 meter high indoor waterfall cascading through the glass in the steel dome will definitely make our photos the ones receiving the, the most likes on Instagram. Finally, we will end our seven day trip by journeying with Julia Roberts and the movie Eat, Pray, Love and head down to Ubu in Indonesia. Starting with Eat, we will go to a local organic farm to learn about Bali spices. As to pray, we will see the Pagulingan Temple with its archaeological Buddhist and learn about the purifying blessing bath at Tirta Empel Temple. Then, with love, we will visit the locals in their Balinese compounds and learn about the unique community living system. The walk will end with a beautiful view of rice fields as we learn about the old irrigation system. The Eat, Pray, Love walking tour in Ubu for sure will top off our wonderful week-long trip. To sum up, we get our travel inspirations from the big screen. In the seven-day trip, our five selection of films shot in Southeast Asia allows us to not only relive the movies, but also experience the beauty of diverse regions. We're convinced that, just as the big screen immortalizes the sights and sounds, the jaw-dropping beauty of nature and man-made wonders graced by rich religions and cultures from Southeast Asia will revitalize our senses and sensibility. sensibility. Thank, Thank you. you. The number one, Where do you come from? It's a common question being asked in an international setting. We team diplomat must grab the opportunity to let the world know more about our country. Dear judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. If I were at the Glico International Team Conference, a platform for you to share ideas, I would definitely say I come from Taiwan, a small island with a democratic living environment, advanced technology industry, and stunning natural scenery. Now, my teammate, Yuan, is going to present her idea. Thank you, Vanessa. If someone asks me the question before the conference, I will firstly share the latest news. Taiwan legalized the same-sex marriage this year, and only 28 countries around the world legally recognize the rights. This is a very controversial issue and can be all attributed to democracy in Taiwan. We vote for our presidential election. We are open to express diverse opinions. We feel secure living in this atmosphere. According to a report from Freedom House, an independent watchdog organization dedicated to the expansion of freedom and democracy. Taiwan scored 91 out of 100 about political rights, civil liberties, and overall freedom. The report indicated that our long-term efforts in pursuing progressive values such as freedom, democracy, and human rights have earned recognition of the international community. Thank you, Anne. Taiwan is really the most democratic country in Asia. During the conference, I will share some innovative ideas in technology and briefly introduce Taiwan like this. Taiwan is excellent in high-tech innovation capacity, such as the manufacturing of semiconductor and information technology. Semiconductors are now used in every corner of our society. Desktop computers, the internet, tablet devices, smartphones, 
are all depending upon semiconductor technology. Taiwan is now the biggest spender on semiconductor equipment in the first quarter of this year. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, is one of the few semiconductors companies in the world, along with Intel and Samsung, with the research and development prowess to continuously pack more computing power into ever smoother and more energy efficient chips. It is anticipated that TSMC dedicates to next generation technologies and makes Taiwan number one. Thank you, Alba. Taiwan is not only number one in technology, we are also rich in various landscapes. Now it is almost the end of the conference. Before saying goodbye, I would like to invite my new friends to visit my country in the near future. So if I were asked the question, I would introduce the magnificent landscapes of Taiwan to them. To me, the Qing Strait Cliff, dropping more than 3,000 feet straight into the sea near Hualien, is the most beautiful scenic area in the entire coastal route of Taiwan. The highway cuts right into the cliff, offering the blue ocean views on one side and the green mountains on the other. The feeling on the road is like flying over the Pacific Ocean. In addition to the natural masterpieces, it is said that the most beautiful scenery in Taiwan is the friendly and passionate people. Hopefully, I've conveyed the welcome message to my new friends. Now, my teammate Vanessa will conclude the speech. Thank you, Emily. As a small island on the western edge of the Pacific Ocean, Taiwan embraces a large number of possibilities as being democratically secure, with pioneering technology, and accessible nature. We think diplomats should be ambitious and competitive to speak up in international settings, bringing Taiwan to the global stage over and over. Thank you.